Okay, today we're going to be looking at Blender 2.5. I'm running Blender 2.58 currently. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to import a scene from GIMP into uh, Blender 3D. So real quick, let's just delete our default cube here. And next, let's open up GIMP. Once GIMP is open, we're going to create a new little image here. So let's see, drag this down. And Make sure everything's in the recording area here. File, new. And I'm going to go to advanced options and I'm going to make the background transparent. So I'm going to go transparent there. I'm just going to do a small image. So 640 by 400 is all right. So here we are, we have a transparent layer. I'm going to quickly grab the circular uh, selection tool, select area. I'm then going to choose a color. We'll just go red. And I'll choose the Fill tool and fill that in. Next, I'll create a new layer. Okay. And I'm going to create a rectangular object like so. Change color to blue and I'm going to fill that in. We'll create a third layer. Okay. Select a new color. I'll just select a lighter blue here. Control A to select the entire layer and then with a paintbrush, I'm going to paint like so. And just make a little design here. And for fun, I'll create one more layer. Okay. I'll do an, another circular tool, make kind of an elliptical shape here. I'll use the granulating tool. And I'll choose just something fun like this. There we go. Okay, so we have a fun little image here. I'm going to save that as. I'll just call it tutorial x dot xcf. xcf is the default GIMP format. That is the GIMP format that will save all your GIMP settings uh, and each layer individually and it will compress each layer down into one layer like a PNG or a JPEG would. Okay, so that is saved. Now let's go back to Blender and go up to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, and let's do a search in here for GIMP. Now you can see there under the import export uh, category there is a import GIMP image to scene. Let's expand that because we do have a little exclamation mark here giving us a little warning and it says that this import requires XFC tools to be installed. Let me check that real quick so we're enabling it but let's also check to see if XFC tools is installed. I'm going to go to the terminal and I'm running uh, Linux Mint, so I'm going to use Aptitude, but if uh, you're running Ubuntu or if you just prefer apt-get, go ahead and use that, but, or whatever package manager you prefer. I'm going to say Aptitude Search XCF, and I'll show every package containing that in the name. And as you can see, I have XF, uh, XCF tools here, and Aptitude tells me with the eye there that it is installed. But I can tell you right now, uh, it's not installed by default, at least not on uh, Linux Mint 11, which is what I'm running. I installed that just before recording this tutorial when I discovered this plugin. Okay, so if you don't have that installed, go ahead and install it with whatever package manager you prefer. Then we can go back to GIMP and uh, we close this uh, user preference windows now that we've checked that. And now that we've checked that, back in our 3D view, if we press spacebar and type GIMP, you can see that there is an option of GIMP import to scene, or sorry, GIMP image to scene. We'll click that and go to where we saved our GIMP file, and we will image to scene. Now, when this imports, it does import a new camera. Um, not really sure why. It doesn't really seem to be pointing at our uh, image. Uh, so I'm just going to delete that because I don't care about that and I'm going to hit zero on the number pad to go to our default camera. Now if I hit F12 to render this out you can see that image there with the transparent background but it's more than just that. It actually imported each layer as an individual plane. So I can select like this and I can grab and move that one there. And grab and move that one there. Oops and grab and move that one there. So you can see each one is individual, each one with its transparent layers. Now this could become handy in the future and I'm going to try to think up some fun ideas to play with this where we can create something with layers 
in um, GIMP and maybe make it uh, more of a flat 3D image if you understand what I'm saying. If not, hopefully I'll come up with something creative that I can show you. But I found this tool pretty uh, um, helpful and uh, interesting and uh, once again uh, at this point it's just using your imagination to create something cool with it. I'm going to start up a new scene real quick over this again with you. Delete the default cube and um, we already have an image created but you go up to file, user preferences, add-ons, do a search for GIMP, check it. Once again you have to have GIMP, or, I'm sorry, XCF tools installed. At this point we can close this, hit spacebar, and choose the type in GIMP and then choose GIMP to scene. Now uh, we can go to temp and we can go to our file here but now um, you'll also notice that uh, there are some options over here to the left. Um, I haven't played with them too much but obviously we can uncheck set camera because we don't need that and now you can see you have different options here um, and just basically play around with them. Most of them have to do with uh, uh, alpha layers, which uh, you would probably want if you have any transparency layers in uh, your GIMP file. And then, you know, scaling on how big they're imported as. So, um, uh, mainly I would just turn off uh, the camera in this case because we don't need that extra camera object. Um, and you can also choose, by default, shadeless materials is chosen which would mean regardless of where your light source is these planes will always be at full brightness if it's checked. If it's not checked, and I'll show you now, last time it was checked by default we'll click import. It imports it. Now if I hit F12 you can see our um, images there all laid over top. Once again they are separate planes that you can move around. But now if I take my light source here and move this out a little bit and change my light source's energy down to we'll say 0.2 see how that looks, we'll do F12 and you can see the colors on each plane are darker where if they were shadeless they would still be at full brightness so that's all depending once again on what you're trying to accomplish but the default setting is to be shadeless so anyway, uh, this is kind of more of a quick tip um, and uh, something that you may find useful. Once again, it's all being creative from this point out. I can, I have some ideas going around in my head. Once again, I, I actually was going to do a tutorial on something else today, and when I went to go do that, I saw this option, started playing with it, and decided to do a tutorial on it instead. So I hope you found this useful, and I hope you join us next Thursday for 3D Thursdays, and I'll do more Blender stuff then. And um, if you create anything with this little uh, add-on, you know, go ahead and post it, let me know, and, uh, and we can share ideas. Thanks again, and I hope that you have a great day.